G'day guys, welcome back. The time has arrived to try the new Araldo paint from Riot Art. Uh, Riot Art used to stock global and they've changed the mix a little bit, rebranded and now it's called Araldo Di Paola. Nice Aussie name. I think it matches their line of uh, canvases that they do. So just rebranding from Riot. So I thought I would try them out. Uh, the lovely people at Riot did send me some colours. They basically sent me primaries and black and white. So I have cool red, cool yellow, green light, cool blue, and white. I do want to show you the difference between the global and the Eraldo before we get started. So let's pop a blob there. Nice big blob of cool blue. And well, this one doesn't blob because it's in a bottle. It's a squirt bottle, but let's do a blob. There we go. So it squirts out. Let's just do the tip test, hey? Here we go. Tip, tip, tip. It's almost at 90 degrees. So you can see that the Eraldo is much thinner. It's uh, running a lot faster than the, the Global. So there's one difference for you. Uh, because of that, I did have to mix my colours thicker than I would normally mix them. So as you know, when I do my 70% glue, 30% water with my flip cut pores, and I'm using the same pouring medium, haven't changed that, I use one to one, so equal amounts of paint. With this paint, because it's so much thinner, I've had to do one and a half parts paint to one part pouring medium. So straight away, I'm using more paint. I'm using an extra 50% of paint. Um, yeah, so that's something to consider, I guess. Um, now, before we get started, I'll show you just one of my previous pores. It's dried now. This was the blue and gold, and I didn't wasn't that happy with it. I lost a lot of the gold. I was really hoping it was more like this, but I put black in it and I probably shouldn't have put black with navy blue. So, but I'll show you, I want to show you how pretty the gold has come up. Look at that. See it shining there. So yeah, it's just a pity that it's quite dark and I think it's just because I put black in. So I wouldn't mind having another go at those colors without the black right so that's that um oh i didn't get my flip cup organized let me get my cup there it is one big flip cup and as always i just spray it with my silicone spray just in there like that and then my wipe the excess out with a paper towel because I don't want to leave it all in there I just want it just a little coating just to make the cup slippery on the inside to get all the paint out okay so in my cups I have got 40 grams of pouring medium and 60 grams of the Ereldo paint and let's do as always three drops of treadmill silicone oil one two three in each colour except the white. One, two, three. So I've tried to put um, colours next to each other that aren't going to mix too badly. So obviously white and blue will make light blue, blue and green turquoise, green and yellow a lime, yellow and red orange, and then red and white back to pink. These two make brown. These two, quite dark purple, so yeah, don't really want to put those two together. Right, oh, be 
been keen to try these. It's been such a huge conversation piece on the Australian Acrylic Pouring Group with some of the Australian branded paints recently. And to tell you the truth, I'm kind of over it. No, we had no problems at all with the global paint. And then all of a sudden this cool blue was really thin and it split. I hadn't made any changes. I was using the same pouring medium that I always do, my glue and water. But um, it just split. There's heaps of conversations and people were getting upset. And then there was a new line. Global was out the door and the new Eraldo was in. And people are talking about that. And, oh... Anyway, let's see how they perform, hey? Put them to the test. In goes some white. You see, I can't pick you up, baby. I'm painting. My teacup poodle down here. She wants uppy mummy. Mummy's painting. I'll see you in a bit. You can lie on your bed. She says, no, I want to be picked up, but climbing up my leg as we speak. I can't pick you up, baby. Okay, first layer's done. Back to the white. So because I've got six, uh, 60 grams of paint and 40 grams of pouring medium, that's 100 grams. Five cups, 500 grams, so nothing's changed there. I need 500 grams to cover this size canvas, 30 by 40 centimeter or 12 by 16 inch. I made a tiny little bit of extra paint of the white just so that I could finish off with white across the top layer. So just like an extra 10 grams of paint. I think I should have, what's this? This is three. I think I'll have four layers. Should have enough paint for four layers because I've only got the one cup. So, you know, if I had five cups, obviously I only have two layers, but because I've only got the one cup, I can have extra layers. Okay, and there's a bit of white left for the, the last layer. Oops, might as well use them all. This end layer is going to be a bit thicker. Okay. In goes the green. It's hard to judge how much paint you're going to do on each layer, isn't it? You just have to do a nice drizzle and coat the top and call it done. <laughs> nice full cup here, though, so, so plenty of paint. Don't do too much paint when you're making up paint um, for your surface. With this particular technique, the flip cup pause, I know this is in centimetres, but if you times 30 centimetres by 40 centimetres and divide that by 2.5, you'll get the amount of paint you need. It's a rough estimate, but you know, it'll, it's a guide. If your mix is really thin, um, your paint's going to spread a lot further and you'll find that your whole surface is covered before you've even tilted. And then if you're using your mix that's too thick, um, you're going to have struggle stretching it. So, but it's a, it's a guide as to how much you need. It's lovely and creamy and silky smooth, the paint. So that's a good thing. It was easy to mix together with the pouring medium. Now I know that um, Wright does have their own pouring mediums. But for me, I have to have something that's a bit thicker, as in my glue and water mix, because I want my cells to hold their shape. So I do need it a little bit thicker than using bought pouring mediums, because they're generally quite thin. Izzy, stop scratching. Yeah, being naughty today, girl. Okay. Come here. I'm just going to put her out of the room. She's very restless today. Off you go. <laughs> Righto.
Tomato. It's released. Oh, I can see cells on top there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, here we go. Oh, those are pretty colours. Nice and bright. Sells up straight away, which is not a good sign. See these little tiny ones? Don't like that. That's what I get up, um, get when I use Flow Troll. Got some wormy creatures too. Yeah, that, those are the cells when I use um, different types of glues, which are a bit thinner, and Flow Troll, I get these little weird cells. Anyway, let's see what happens. I just want to move this around a little bit. That red looks pretty up there. Just a shame about this big blobby thing, isn't it? I don't think I'm going to be able to leave that there. Hmm. Okay, no, I'm going to continue as I would with any other pour. Um, cells are not, these cells are not very well shaped, but let's see what happens. And I haven't even torched yet, and we're getting these weird cells popping up. I don't know what they've put in the mix, they've obviously added something to the mix that's made the paints a little bit thinner. following me you would have seen some videos where I I call them dragon scales when I pour I get these particular cells I call them dragon scales so I don't know why I'm getting them now lots and lots of little cells popping up Way too many. It seems quite reactive to the torch. I didn't torch any closer than I normally would. I certainly didn't torch very long. Um, and got a massive cells up. Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. I might get my corner catcher out. So I'm going to lose a lot of paint over the edge there. What a shame that big blobby thing's right in the middle, hey? Right in the middle. Couldn't be in a worse spot. Now this bit here, that was from, I think, the bottom of the cup when I flipped it, so just going to get some of that off. As I'm heading for that corner, there we go, it's gone. Okay, and back. Paint's moving nicely across the surface. You know, primaries aren't my favourite colour because you get all these other colours that, um, you know, you necessarily might not want, but you're going to get because of primaries. But hey, that's all I had, so it's going to have to do for this particular test. Might be able to get some of that off later on. Take that around so it doesn't drip over the center. This is really pretty here, isn't it? That red with the green on it. It's quite striking. Okay, let's get to that last little corner there and try and save some of the red. It's quite pretty. So it still looks like it's quite a thin mix. I'm just going to clean off my hands. Quite a thin mix. Um, 
um, because the mix is a little bit thinner and I mean I you know I tried to thicken it up I used one and a half parts paint to one part pouring medium um, it still is quite thin so my colors have blended a little bit um, so they haven't stayed as true as they could have I've got quite a few out um, overstretched cells down here I'm going to see if I can get rid of some of that off there just to about there that'll do come back okay I think that will do that big blobby thing that I had in the middle it's kind of disguised a little bit but uh, yeah quite busy uh, let me get rid of this so you guys saw what happened straight away after I tilted the cup over I got a mass of those little tiny dragon scale cells that I really dislike they're not rings they're not cells as such because they're not rings and I don't have colors inside them they're just kind of um, yeah I, I get them when I use the glo uh, the global glue I get that type of scale which is unusual and also when I use Floetrol so I don't know what right have added but they've added something um, and it's destabilized my cells the other thing I don't know if you can see from up there but I will take you down um, the blue the cool blue looks as if it's separated the blue and the red actually look as if they've separated but I'll take you down so that you can have a closer look and um, you guys can decide for yourselves right let's take you down for a close-up I think if I'd thickened it any more um, it would have been too thick and I wouldn't be able to to move it around the surface so um, we do have some nice cells we've got colors inside colors um, it's very busy I don't have the usual round cells just sort of floating in space the background is kind of all taken up of these little tiny cells or little um, scales little dragon scales you can see there see the blue it's split separated and see those lime green that was the yellow and the green together see how they're not actually cells they just I don't know they're just blobs dragon scales I call them they're not they're not cells they're not multicolored they're just these little things that pop up before you even torch the torching is what brings the silicone up and then you get these round cells with the rings inside them those are proper cells and that's from the silicone oil these are the little green things they're not cells they're just reactions of of the paint um, so for me I'm a bit disappointed you can see there the red split the cells are not well shaped uh, if I had made this one-to-one -one, it would have been really really thin like one part paint one part pouring medium it would have been way way too thin got a few nice cells up here up on the left there but um, yeah, certainly not up to what I would classify beautiful cells that I would like in my pores, which is a real shame. I was expecting much, much more from all the, the hype. But anyway, you guys try them. See what you think. Just because I've done one pour and I'm not that happy with it doesn't mean that, you know, they're... They're not going to work for you so give them a go let me know what you think put your photos of your pores up on the Australian acrylic pouring group on Facebook I would love to see them so yeah we have try things out before we um, 
make any comments, hey? Righto, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you for the next pour. Bye for now.